Right, this is a demonstration of the IQ Bookshelf, which is the app on the right hand side. We're going to go straight in to the Consolidated Guide of European Aviation Rules. Uh, this is an uploaded PDF, uh, which is straight out of InDesign, uh, saved with bookmarks so you get um, contents. So we've got a contents list so we can scroll through and get to any particular section within the book and visit that page. Uh, we've got a scrubber across the bottom which allows us to take you quickly to a specific page and obviously you can also scroll through pages. The control functions in the top right hand corner, the AA allow you to fit the page to its height so you don't have to scroll the page up and down, which left and right will do to get through the book. You have um, settings for audio. Uh, there's no audio in this book, but I'll demonstrate that later. And there's a search function. So I did a search earlier for council. That returns all my results, and I can click any of those results to take me through to the specific, specific page. We can add bookmarks and then we can, that's in the top right hand corner, and then in the bottom right hand corner we can actually see all our bookmarks of pages I've actually been to. And if I go to a revision control page, you'll see I have a note which is highlighted in pink. And what I'll do is tap to add another note to the word requirements and I can say it actually applies to that whole paragraph. I'm just dragging the handles out as you would on an iPad to select the text. I can then create that bookmark, that's um, that note. I can edit the colour of the note and I can add a note to it. Second note. I already have a note, so I'll just call it Gary's second note. And we save that. So that's pretty much the notes taken care of. Um, the other function we have uh, in the bottom right hand corner is the uh, flashcards. Now flashcards can only be created on the desktop app, not on the um, um, iOS or Android app. Um, so the desktop app runs on Mac and PC and I've built three cards here which allow you to go through and it's, uh, I'll show you the creation of these later, but essentially it's um, snippets of information that the end user wishes to train on or remember or you know fresh or jog their memory on. So uh, we can have a look at all cards, scroll through the cards and it's you can see that it's changing whether I do know it, whether I don't know it. So if you've gone back and then you can reshuffle or reset the cards so we can shuffle them around and then see okay yeah I don't know that one so I'm going to change that because my memory's gone a bit. And then, so that's, I flip the card over there to see what it relates to. So you can have little memory joggers. Okay. And then we can reset back to the beginning again. So that's flashcards, but I'll show you the creation of those a bit later. The other thing to show you on this static PDF is um, the folio, which is where you can control uh, your notes, your highlights, your bookmarks. So we have uh, next to the word notebook at the top, we've got a little filter, so we can bring the filter up and we can say we want notes, highlights or just notes um, and it, uh, you know, how it's going to order them and then we can actually go, okay, well we want to have a look at the one highlighted in yellow and that will take us through to where that note is in the book and we can view the note and we can edit the note obviously there and we can um, delete the note or copy the note and move it elsewhere if we want to. So that's all controlled from the little icon down in the bottom left hand corner which looks like a file fax. I'm just going to run through a demonstration of a book which is built as an EPUB which is slightly different to the uploaded PDF. Uh, it's built within a system called Studio uh, Online and uh, it's a drag and drop system that allows you to build content and uh, which is 
the content becomes a little bit more interactive rather than just being a static PDF. So I'll take you into this book. Top of the page we have a graphic, there's a header for each of these. In the bottom right hand corner of that graphic is a uh, plus sign which allows us to bring up that image a bit larger so we can see the detail of it. We can zoom in and out and we can come out of that image. We have all the functions that we did with the uploaded PDF where we can scroll through the book and make notes and highlights. But the added advantage of this is that we can build video into the book. Uh, now just now I tried to enlarge this out to full screen and it all went a bit haywire on my recording system. So I won't do that, but you can bring this out as a large uh, video, but you can interact with the video, rewind it, pause it and uh, mute the sound. Uh, there is no sound on this current video. Uh, the next page automatically loads a video, uh, automatically loads up um, uh, previews of uh, some images, which is a, a, a gallery. We can bring those up and we can uh, close them down, just interact with them. But if we want to scroll through, we just uh, bring them up large and we can have a look at those in a bit more detail. Again, the header can be brought up with a little plus sign on the uh, bottom right hand of the image and all the functions are still there for text. On the next page, uh, this may be of a bit more interest to you in terms of uh, uh, learning and uh, end user engagement. So we have a, a simple quiz. Um, what's the Eiffel Tower made of? Let's go plastic. Check answer. No, it's incorrect. We can reveal the answer, we'll go to the next one. Who's the current president? Donald Trump. Check answer. Your answer is correct. Next question. Manchester United. And we go on. Now this question is slightly different because in the top bar, just below where we've got one, two, three, four, we have a play sound. Now let's hope. There we go. So hopefully you can hear a bird song. That is not representative of this bird and it runs for 2 minutes 51 seconds, so we won't listen to all of that. But then you can pause that and then go through and say, okay, I think it's a blue tip, and let's uh, just get rid of our menu, so we can check the answer. Answer's incorrect, so let's reveal the answer. Oh, it's a robin. Fantastic. So that's the, uh, that's the quiz. Um, and that can, uh, my understanding at this early stage is that that can go out to an LMS and report back if you need it to, but um, really at the moment, probably just as a ready reckoner to test your, your knowledge. Um, again, I don't know whether you, you build feedbacks into, um, with your students regarding uh, a hard copy or whether they do any feedback online, but you can build that into the back of a book and they can give you feedback. Um, I'm currently exploring at the moment how this um, gets back to um, your LMS or reporting, whether it can go out to an email. Uh, we're just talking to the developers about that. So uh, we can give you an update on that uh, a bit further down the line. But that's pretty much the uh, interactive book. As you can say, it's built in blocks, so you can um, you know, build those video thing bits and pieces in, build the uh, Q&As in, and feedback. Uh, so it gives that slight uh, better interaction. Without and also with all the functions of uh, having your notes and uh, flashcards and all the other elements that I showed you on the previous um, edit just early on in this video. Okay, so now I've uh, opened up the consolidated guide to aviation um, European aviation rules in a web app. So this book is being viewed online through a browser and is totally cross-platform. So it's you know, Chrome on your MacBook, um, Safari, Explorer, um, uh, all the likes of those uh, browsers um, on cross-platform. So this book is, uh, I, I opened this um, after leaving it on the iPad and it's brought me to the current page I was reading in the iPad. So it's remembered where I was in the book. And um, you know, likewise, you've got scrolling left and right so the function is very, very similar. Just clicking the arrow on the left there. Um, we have 
um, the table of contents uh, as we did before. We've got the search function, we've got the notebook, um, the folio icon, which allows us to bring up all our highlights and edits and notes. Uh, that I'll go through at the, in probably in later detail. I need to learn a little bit more about that area. There's a lot of functions behind there, um, but they're not covered off on the iOS app or the desktop app. Uh, now this is the flashcards. Um, that's why I've brought you in here um, because I mentioned in, previously in the video that flashcards couldn't be created on the iOS app, uh, but they could on the desktop. It is an actual fact. Um, you can only create them. Uh, through the web browser. So um, here are my three cards. Again, they're cross-platform and they're syncing up. So I've got the three cards here, the same ones I was looking at before. And um, we want to uh, add a card. So um, we're going to add, make, create a new deck. Gary's new deck. Okay. Great. Save that. And we're going to add cards. So the front of card, I'm going to copy this bit of text here, point D, copy that onto my pasteboard, and we're going to put it on the front of the card. I'm going to paste in here. Okay. And in the back of the card, um, we're going to put Whatever I think is relevant to the front of that card, so it may be like before, you know, this applies to fixed wing aircraft, or this applies to heli you know, helicopters, um, uh, or whatever it may be. So that bit of information is pertinent to me and of interest to me, and I need to learn it and remember it. And um, the back of the flash card is about how I'm going to remember that, or what I need to remember about that bit of information. So you simply save that and then you've got your, your flash card, and then you can flip that round. So uh, you can you know, play through them, you can filter them, um, and you can create different decks uh, for different parts of the book as well. So that's really what I wanted to run through um, on here, um, just to show you those, and, um, and also um, just run through uh, that the interface was, was very, very similar. Again, you know, we can we can zoom in, we can zoom out. Let's close those flashcards off. You know, we can we can control the zoom that we want. I've got my window set here just so that it works in line with the other videos that I've done. So uh, you know, we've got all the controls that we did down the sides here and across the bottom, like we did in the uh, in the desktop app and the iOS app. Um, but the, the desktop app is, is very, very similar. Again, it's, it's all intuitive and has the same kind of functions. So uh, hopefully that's of interest. Um, please do let me know if there's anything else that you need to know about the system or you'd like to show me in further detail, show you in further detail, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Thank you very much for watching.